Something came from Baltimore. 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 Something came from Baltimore. Baltimore. Hi guys, this is Tom Gacker from Something Came From Baltimore. Today I'm releasing a long form interview with the South African jazz piano player, healer, and EDM producer, Naduzo Makatani. Naduzo Makatani just released his new album called Modes of Communication Letters from the Underworld in April 2020. And the reviews are in, and it's a solid five rating. We connected Monday, July 27th, and had a spirited conversation about the gods, the spirit world, healing the soul, and dealing with stress in the COVID-19 pandemic, Black Panther and the Zulu Nation, and so many things. This was just not an interview, but a conversation of just two guys just really passionate about these topics. We both agreed that we should just share the whole conversation with you. A traditional edit of this interview will be available in the future, but we hope you enjoy this conversation now. And while I got your attention, please subscribe to Something Came From Baltimore. We have interviews from so many people, Auntie Hammy, Gogo Penguin, Paula Cole, Warren Wolf, Joey Alexander, Joey DeFrancesco, Kat Edmondson. Now here is the full Zoom interview. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, great. Modes of Communication. That's the name of your album. It's a letter from the underground. It's been out for a couple of months and it's getting like five star reviews all over the place. Yeah. Now, normally you would be out running around the world, you know, playing that for people, correct? Definitely, man. Yeah, yeah that's true. So how does yeah. it feel to have a hot record on your hand and you can't share it with the world? <laughs> Man, you know, it's, it's, it's many things. On the one hand, it's, it's like, you know, I can't help but to think about, like, what it would be like to be on the road and, and to be promoting the record and um, getting to play with different musicians and um, really interacting with people as well with regards to, like, live performance and having an audience and, you know, just like, you know, the normal, you know? But on the other hand, we realize that we're not dealing with the normal and, and, and therefore there, there is a need and even an urgency to sort of like adjust to what it means to uh, put out a record in these times with the content that, that this particular record has. And it's not a, it's not a foreign thing for jazz to, um, to have like, you know, aspects of like prophecy, you know, divining the future and stuff. But more so with this record, cause like the first single that came out was talking about like, uh, how do we find a hiding place? How do we find this utopian place where sicknesses don't reach, you know? And this came out in November last year and the song was recorded in 2018. So the, we didn't know about this coming, you know? So, so on the one hand, like I come back to sound and, and, and listen again and realize that, oh man, maybe sound already knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I've talked to a couple artists and their, their album is more relevant now than it was at the time that they recorded it. Um, <laughs> that, that's it, that's yeah. it. Your album is intense, so I have a lot of questions. So I just want to apologize up front if they sound goofy, but um, modes of communication, letters from the underworld. What does that title mean? Yeah, so, um, you know, and again, you know, it's, it's, it connects to, I think one of my albums, I think I put it out in uh, 2015, it's called Listening to the Ground. And, and the idea of listening as a way of knowing you know um so you know if you uh study african um, sort of cosmology and 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 um, spiritual and religious beliefs you find that like listening is quite at the center of you know how people communicate and and how people get to know their gods so to speak mm -hmm. so th the idea then of 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 modes of communication is really that there is another world elsewhere, you know. There is a, a more tranquil place. There is, there is a place where, you know, uh, freedoms are, are real, you know. And, and, and so I use then the second title, which is Letters from the Underworlds, as a metaphor suggesting that, like, 
in order for us to stay connected to that part of being, there is a need for us to be constantly reading something. You know, there is something that is sent. So that is a metaphor, but it speaks about like, what does it mean for the sonics, the, the sound itself to carry messages that could be read in the same way that a letter is read, you know, but also like the idea of a letter as being packaged, you know, in some way that it, it exists inside an envelope and the effort to hear then as an effort to open up you know, and, 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 and so it uses the idea of sound, you know, as, as something that avails itself, but, but then it, 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 it pushes us to have a responsibility of listening, you know. So, so yeah, I was just like, you know, using those, those ideas as like a way of connecting to how sound could also be read as some form of literature, you know, it could be read as some form of like text, you know. Uh, so yeah that, that's basically it yeah mm -hmm. now i'm a quaker so what we do is we sit in a room and we're quiet for a whole hour that's our gathering and what we do is oh man yeah we we try to uh use quiet and stillness and yep. you know what i personally do is try to remove everything that is in my head with spinning around you know the noise and then yeah. pay attention to what comes in you know what you know i clear my mind it's it's free of any kind of noise and all of a sudden something comes in and what is that why is that important oh man yeah it seems that it's something similar to what you're talking about yeah the man this is it's, it's incredible the connections you are making uh -huh. um brings me to something that I've been it's been in my spirit quite a lot like what does it then mean uh to project from a space of stillness in these moments even you know what I mean sure to project from this like silence you know because there's a way in which without musicians realizing but the 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 the, the post performance or even during performance with an audience you know that had like a a lot of noise both at, at like, you know, a literal level, you know, the applause and everything, but also just like, you know, what being a musician uh, meant and what it came with, you know, with, you know, like, um, uh, you know, reviews and, 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 you know, uh, really like the world and how they respond to your sound. But in these moments, we realize that like there's less of that and there's a need, which is, in many ways urgent to sort of like do it for yourself <laughs> do yeah. it towards the inner way you know and 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 that what you are saying that is very profound as a way of thinking about these moments it's like you know we, we have to project from a place that is still and this place produces a different kind of music yeah and it reminds us even you know i've been doing a lot of online stuff you know with uh, you know, um, WPGO, I've been doing a lot of these things, you know, uh, online. So, and, and what I find is that, you know, playing online makes us to incorporate silence in a more deliberate way. Cause like the, the room itself doesn't have an audience. So it's like, you realize how silence is a fundamental part of playing the music you know <laughs> you yeah. remember the importance of silence and how and how it is not only uh you taking a break but we can be deliberate now about playing the silence that then moving from silence to playing into the sound as, as opposed to playing the sound and that's similar to what monk had said that the notes that are not played the silence in between the notes are almost equally as important as the notes being played. Right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, he's the man for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's revolutionary. This is what I think of you. Like when I did all this research and people need help right now and you have, of course, man. You, you have the ability to, to express yourself really well. I think you should do a couple either YouTube tutorials on trying to tell people how to, where they go and how to get the spirit yeah. that, that that works i know you're doing music too but you're a healer and that was one of my questions is 
is is the is the healing the part of the music because your music is definitely healing or is it yeah. that or is it the fact that there was you know a zulu world kind of kind of a tribal uh, burial ground like in your in your area man you know thank you for making those connections cuz like that's very important for me you know cuz i think it's in and and the and, and again you you bringing this whole idea of being brought from a place brought up from a place this place uh like you are saying from the zulu culture um so the the way that i was introduced to sound within the zulu culture within that particular context was sound has always been um you know almost synonyms with healing <laughs> yeah, yeah. even to a, to an extent there is one word that is used for sound for healing for dance for prophecy for divination and that word is called ngoma so ngoma this, yeah you say ngoma saying um you know referring to it but as 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 a um um as a verb is ngoma to heal you know so but ingoma is the healing what is so, um, what is ubuntu ubuntu is um, a, a construct that is uh, um is a philosophy here yeah, that is very ancient in the bantu speaking societies that uh sees uh you know being in the context of community so so there is a saying here that says umuntu umuntu ngabantu which basically means i am because you are you know uh -huh. so basically it, it it argues that you cannot exist as an individual you only exist as an individual in the context of a community so it's a communal approach to how people share to how people live you know wow. so that that sort of background paired with ngoma which is healing dance and you know prophecy so it 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 argues that music in the first place is not separate from healing you know it argues that music is not separate from you know divination you know so i grew up in that kind of space and uh, at the age of 13 as i remember but i just learned my mother just told me uh, a couple of days ago that it was actually at the age of 10 that i i got the gift of healing uh, as a sangoma which is then uh, channeled through a dream and you you have to go through like initiation you know which from that initiation you come up with a song and and that particular song informs your healing is like a code you know so this is the song that i hum before anything that i do you know so so the 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 connections you are making about sound and healing are very deliberate and 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 like you are rightfully saying like they there's a need for us to sort of like you know cultivate that that part for a lot of artists because you know but also the general public because people are going through a lot of frustration trauma you know and it's understandable because we live in a world where you know is very unpredictable and 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 that makes human beings because human beings by nature they like to know what's going to happen you know so but it 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 makes me think about improvisation as well at the same time about like how improvisation is always seeking not to know <laughs> sure. in jazz in particular you know yeah. it's like <laughs> isn't that a part where you know if if you are doing the same thing it's rote it's kind of over and over it's routine you're doing and you're not improvising you're not using your full brain but if you are improvising you all your synapses are on fire because you have to think about what's going on now you could be channeling your thoughts in kind of a in a in a trance of some sort where things are being channeled out of you but your whole brain like is all firing up and that's the the thrill of of uh improvising man you you put it beautifully all day you know it's 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 like this channeling in real time is like this openness that like but also the openness coming with a sense of vulnerability too because i mean <laughs> you know that's the truth about improvising you know if you think about people like um, 
Kit Jarrett, for example, you know, you can, he demonstrates this in, in, in the most incredible way where you can tell that everything he plays is, is almost like he's citing it from another place. It's like, so you have to let go of this self, you know, and, and be able to cite things in real time from another place, which might be quite heavy for the body. You know, I, I feel it when sometimes when I finish playing a gig, because that kind of, like you are saying, is trance, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and trance means something else taking over. <laughs> you know, so wow. that's something else taking over is not an easy thing. You know, it, it, it can be harsh on the body, uh, but it produces incredible sonic results that are, are healing in themselves. Wow. Yeah. And, and I've seen you live in concert just by watching you on YouTube. And yeah, you're I mean, you're physically exhausted after you're done, but I'm sure you're, you're, you're <laughs> mentally spent also. Let me, um, I, you know, when you do these Zoom things, you only have 45 minutes before they shut you down. Um, oh, I see. I don't, I, we can always, I don't want to take all your time, and, but I'm enjoying our conversation. I, I have so many questions. <laughs> that uh, Bring them, yeah. man. Bring as many as you can. <laughs> okay, so let, let's go into your album cover. On the yeah. top right hand, you have a pyramid. On the bottom right hand, you have a butterfly. Uh, on the top left is a moon, and I, it looks like a man is riding a bull on the... Yeah. Okay. Yep. So what are those symbols, and are they Zulu symbols? So these symbols, you know, I've, I've been studying quite a lot of, like, you know, uh, the Kemet history. So the Kemet history uh, is emerging from, you know, Egypt, you know. So mm-hmm. the ancient name for Egypt was Kemet you know so then history tells us that like you know the the nguni people which is a, a bigger branch where the zulus came from you know um were led out of you know um um egypt you know like they they you know we're part of the the descendants of egypt you know so um in in these symbols here, it's um, it's trying to make sense of you know um, the 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 histories of black people in the continent that precede the colonial time, you know, because there's a way in which um, dealing with historical um, you know uh, historical narratives in 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 in. For, for example, through education, you, you, we are taught so much about like what it meant to be under a colonial hand and less to do with a pre-colonial, you know, sort of, you know, history. And therefore, I feel that if we are deliberate about like bringing some of the, what I then call the, the echoes or the overtones of the pre-colonial, we are able to see ourselves in the context of victory in the context of strength you know uh as opposed to in the context of slavery or in the context of you know being overpowered being silenced not having a voice so i use my sound to remind people about that but also i realize that sound in itself is not enough but i realize that symbols are important but i also realize that text is important you know sandra spoke profoundly about like you know egyptology as really a study of humanity you know a study of the origins of humankind and 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 he spoke profoundly about equations because what you see as well on those graphics on the album cover is like equations you know i I Um, thought it was horoscopes or or astrology maps of some sort exactly exactly you know i i started fa- being fascinated by that because my grandmother in 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 her prayers when she was still alive she would mention astrological things and i started thinking she never went to school she never um you know she could not read but she she had a language for astrology and astronomy you know what i mean sure so i started thinking you know, there is this subtle being inside all of us that remembers, you know, 
mm -hmm. certain things we might not have experienced in this body, but there is a subtle being inside every human that remembers something of the past that can be a thousand and thousands of years ago. And again, it's, it's in meditation, like you were saying, it's in this silence and trying, like you, you put it so well when you're saying like silence as a way of allowing something to come in. You, you start witnessing what comes in beyond what exists in your head already, you know? So that's exactly the thing, you know? It's about like, these things, they come in these moments of, of silence, you know, of trying to connect with the deeper part of self, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, the, the I, album I, art is, is an effort to do that. I, I think that silence is the key for healing also. I think we're so bombarded with sounds, noise, and distractions and yeah, that, that yeah. Every, you know, yeah. it's necessary for... for uh, you know, even if you meditate for, you know, 10 minutes a day. Um, it sounds yep. like you, are you knowledgeable about Reiki? You know, you, are, you, are you doing past life regressions? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I've I been thinking about that, but more in, you know, my own sort of cultural context. Oh. So we, we, um, we have a thing that, um, you know, it could be translated in English as the ontotritic nature of being. So basically, this is a cycle of life, you know. It, um, so the, the essence of this uh, triad, you know, is that it, it suggests that through our connection with the spiritual world, we are able to live simultaneously with three layers of existence. So that is the living and the living dead, which pe people often call the ancestors, you know, and then the ones to be born. So in, in, my, in, my, in, 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 in my culture, you know, people have always understood uh, the context of being based on the triad. So which means um, as we are constantly here, we, through ritual, of course, through these connections, through sound, through dance, through uh, poetry, we get lifted to connect with the living dead which are our ancestors but also we are connected with the souls that have transcended the body and they are now ready to come back to 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 live as as human beings in a body mm -hmm. so as a result you know like um my ancient you know sort of like ancestors used to give names to to their kids you know, even 10 years before they come because they were helping the pathway to get back, you know, because there is a realm where the soul yearns to find the body again, you know, and it has to do with the unfinished business, so to speak, you know, with, with the journey is not finished. And we believe that when the, your journey is finished, when you, when you die, you then uh, become Itongo, which is this infinite, being which becomes an energy field so you you no longer need a body you float with the wind you you are one with everything so all of these things are towards a kind of oneness eventually well i don't want to blow your mind but i i'm going to just put a thought into your head see if, it, if you think the one of the reasons yeah. that we this this uh you know the community of of human beings is having such difficulty is that the population is is too high for uh, soul regeneration. In other words, we have too many people with, and the, the spirits can't you. enter their body. So we're creating soulless human beings. Uh, oh man. Yeah, and it, we're I, out of- I we're, never thought of it that way. We're out I of balance. Of it yeah, we're out of balance. We have way too many people who have no internal connection to really anything you know and it's there we go there we go yeah 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 man it's a, I, you know i could we would only it. we'd go be more it. uh one of the things that the quakers believe is um that we should go back to a population of like say 1960 and that's just across the world and that way it would give uh the earth a, a, a sense to breathe we're in automation and and now we're using computers 
people would have the opportunity to actually have jobs and they would have purpose in in life yeah uh, yeah, and, yeah and and purpose is what you would is a, an internal driving force but with, yes of course with, yeah. with without with this right now we're we're over balanced with people and and it's it's t taking everything off you know off kilter if we would look at it collectively of saying you know we love people we just want to go back to that that number i yeah. think we, we'd have yeah. a balance of you know humanity yeah uh, man i you know i i totally agree with you you know with regards to like you know soul as coming in this world to find purpose and 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 the not finding of that purpose is creating some level of imbalance sure. because even within uh my cultural beliefs is believed that even sickness even disease is a, is is a result of of some imbalance with the spiritual world you know so you know i i resonate totally with what you're saying it's 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 like purpose is is lacking in a lot of you know um being in the world these days so this alignment with purpose is necessary even for healing mm -hmm. for the people that are here in this world even for for us to heal we have to be aligned with the greater purpose and and like you know there's purpose of man and there's purpose of the universe <laughs> you know and sometimes these two they're not necessarily uh in sync sometimes you know this is what i think about my record actually coming out now it's like the purpose of man is that when you put out a record you should go on the road and play for the people while the universe on the other hand created this channel purposefully so that when people can move then this music leaves and helps people to function <laughs> you know yeah. so these two layers of purpose you know and 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 therefore being a healer is an exercise of creating synchronicity and 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 readjusting every single day to this harmonious balance between the dreams of the universe and the dreams of man wow and i don't know what i can use for the, my interview because we really we're, we didn't get to the music yet <laughs> but uh, you're i i said briefly just in the bio of uh that was mentioned in blue note is that you are living kind of in a in an area where the zulu nation was prominent you know from 1828 to 1840 so huh. Do you feel the ancestor vibrations or now you created a mantra that uh, that you felt young and when you were 10, but do you feel things like, do you feel like it's a sacred ground where you're at? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. You know, so again, you know, w w when the idea of listening to the ground, I'm going to keep refer referencing this album. It was in 2015 because <laughs> it connects greatly with, with this particular one, you know. Sure. So um, if, if that album was a question, this album comes as a proposed answer. So they live so almost like together. So this, you know, I've been thinking, there's a song on this new album called um, uh, Beneath the Earth. You know, and um, that's what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so so beneath the earth is this idea of what it means for human beings to start remembering from beneath their feet. So, as what does it mean to be walking on lands that have so much memory that it vibrates through your feet into your consciousness? Yeah, you know. And that is really the thing about the Zululand for me. It's like so much of the history there is, you know, like you say, in the 1800s already, this history is distorted because of what it meant in those years to, you know, uh, to coexist with coloniality. So, but then again, I, I bring in this idea of a pure memory that, exist underneath our feet but also if you go to uh guazulu natal the landscapes are magical man you know the mountains there you know the hills it, it, it almost feels like the echoes of our 
great great foremothers and forefathers they still sing in those mountains you know <laughs> it feels like they still sing you know uh with the streams you know and, and so it, it it for me it, it is important that i go back there all the time to sort of like you know, get into this vibration you know um tap into this history in a in a spiritual way I was watching a documentary a long time ago. Uh, Hugh Masekela was talking about the Zulu oh, Nation. Man. It was uh, Amadela. Uh, it's a revolution in four-part harmony. It came out in 2003. He's talking about the Zulu Ooh. Nation. Uh, Lucy Masekela was on it, and uh, uh, Maria Makiba, I think I'm saying her name right, was also yes, on yes, there. Yes, 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 you are. But uh, they, were, they were talking about the Zulu Nation and that how the, the, as warriors they failed because they were so musical and that uh yeah. part of their rituals <laughs> was music and everyone could hear them from a distance so it, <laughs> yes. it, it was, there was never so, a, a surprise attack while they were strong and and and, and uh, amazing they had this thing where people knew exactly where they were at <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't hide you can't hide a Zulu man. Yeah, <laughs> this is a, this you is know, the, that's oh. a beautiful that's a beautiful um, you know documentary reminding me of and yeah. it, you know it's it's beautiful as well to hear people like Ibrahim on that speaking about the notion of home as being you know uh, the music home as being in the music you know because a lot of the history of South African jazz also developed equally you know, in exile and in the diasporas, you know, and, and um, I think it's Brian Hugh on that, um, who was a very close friend of mine as well. You know, he said something on that um, documentary that when he was in the U.S., sometimes he would just like walk around talking to himself yeah. <laughs> in the native language just to remind himself and people would think he was crazy, yeah. but he was missing home so much that he started talking to himself well, in he... the native tongue. It's such a beautiful documentary reminding me of. He also said that like he was losing himself, like he was losing his soul because he was in like a, I guess a white culture or another culture. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it was his goal to not lose what was inside him. Yeah, it was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he felt yeah. strongly about that. He felt yeah. strongly about that. And Ibrahim it, as well, he talks about dreams and like, dreaming you're in one place and waking up to another that's like that man made me think about so many things yeah hmm. so the, the goofiest question i have the zulu nation okay yeah everyone is saying that the black panther movie the marvel movie that while it, it pulled from other cultures of warriors that it's predominantly yeah, yeah, yeah. it's predominantly zulu now Yes, indeed. Uh, do you agree with that? Because I, I needed some, yeah. some. Okay, all right. You know, um, you know, I listened to um, Kristen McBride and, and and Kristen Scott speak. Um, you know, on this new part um, uh, thing that they do, the series, and um, they were speaking about the art of war. You know, and you know, I got in late, so I, I, I don't know what context they were speaking from. But like, I think Christian Scott was, was saying, and I'm paraphrasing, like that in his approach of like the bandstand, he thinks about this approach of, you know, a warrior, you know, and, and how you attack, you know? Sure. And you mentioning Black Panther, and um, because, you know, they, they are using the same system that Chaga Zulu used of a, you know, you know, if you look at the, the horns of a bull, you know, this whole like circle kind of thing. So this is what the, 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 the Zulus use are under the leadership of Shaga Zulu, you know, that they would come, there will be a group that's coming directly to you while there's a, 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 the two horns that were developing on the side. So before you realize you were inside a kind uh -huh. of circle and, and you couldn't ex escape, you know? Just like and, the movie. Yeah, just like the movie. So, so just like, <laughs> You know, th those connections you are making are, are, are really there. You know, I felt them in a big way, culturally too, you know. Oh. I have like one more question before. Well, I'm sure. Skipping. It's, I'm, been, it's been amazing. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm skipping uh, some questions because 
uh, I, I I don't want to steal all your time, but um, <laughs> do you, that you you're you're 37, and uh, South uh, South Africa apartheid ended in 1994. So. Yeah. You're you were pretty young, but you definitely have it in your psyche of what it was. And what do you feel the scar tissue is maybe on the on South Africa? Is there is there scar tissue that's that's uh, visible or have you guys moved forward and 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 uh, progress? Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, um, yeah, that's that's a very uh, difficult question because. On the one hand, um, you know, uh, the, the, the post-apartheid moment was supposed to be a moment of freedom, of free education, freedom of speech, you know, all these layers of freedom. Um, and, and, and of course, people were excited. Mandela had come out of prison. You know, uh, you know, we we had the first black president. You know, and 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 of course, it was like a joyful time. You know, and and uh, the nineties, I was very young, but like like you say, I you know, I have a memory of it because it was, you know, there was a lot of suffering in the eighties when I was very young in the eighties. Already, one got used to the sound of the tear gas, sound the smell of the gunpowder you know, uh, the smell of blood from people dying. So th these traumas from that very young age, I can remember them vividly, you know, because it was, it was so, you know, in your face. Um, and um, so, you know, the post-94 moment was great. The musicians had come back from exile, Brahu, uh, Abdullah Ibrahim, Mamlet Ambuli, everyone came back home. Um, you know, and, and, and it was a celebration until, you know, like, you know, the, like, I would say maybe around 2007, 2008, coming up, people started questioning the promises of 94, you know, that Mandela was making in all his speeches and like, well, where are these things, you know, free education, free housing, you know, um, all these things that were said as the things that were part of the post-colonial. And people still struggled with those. People still didn't have. And as a result, then the students started organizing. They organized what they called Fees Must Fall, which was basically saying the promises of 94 need to come into place. And then the, there was Rose Must Fall, which was all the statues that carry these memories of, of apartheid and all these people that killed a lot of people. And you find the statues still, the memory of those people still around us. And, and the students organized and, 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 and you know, they, 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 they were breaking those statues, you know. And then uh, there was the decolonization of curriculum, which is what I think informs the jazz that's coming out of South Africa now, that like, you know, people are really starting to question what is being taught, you know, these books that are being taught, you know, how much of their, of our histories is being taught and, and how much of our cultures is being taught. So, you know, I would say the post-colonial, the post-apartheid South Africa is a very conflicted time in that as much as it, it falls under a time where freedom is supposed to be a thing, but we realize these conflicts and, 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 and the failures and, you know, the cracks of, 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 of the picture of freedom, especially now with this corona, uh, COVID-19 happening, the, the, the failures of the systems, the cracks are further exposed where some people that are living in, in the townships, the townships are like the ghetto here in South Africa, sure. where, you know, like people cannot even exercise social distancing. It's impossible because they don't have space. So the, these cracks are then exposed, um, you know, in the same way that like the, 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 many of the, 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 the learners are starting from home and, and half, well, a greater percentage of the population doesn't have iPads, doesn't have laptops, and these are the cracks of 
you know the you know so but the privileged people in south africa are functioning whereas the poorest of the poor is really struggling from day to day to live because they don't have jobs you know they don't have education because they don't have access to technology and even like internet you know some of these communities don't have internet connection so they are just left in a world where they are dying really mm-hmm. you know so man it's it's quite sad you know it's it's different realities for different people depending where you are it almost mirrors what we're going through right now but i think we're in the early stages of where you're at <laughs> you know we're, yeah uh, yeah of course um of course, man. The killings, the brutality in the U.S. as well. You know, it's we are um, we. Um, I'm involved in the uh, the the League for Poor People. It's uh, 140 million poor people live in America, and uh, you know, oh, they, there. If we don't change it, it's, there's going to be an additional 240 on top of the 140 within the next 20 years. Wow. So you know. Uh, Oof. You know, equality of, of finance. I mean, if I always look at it like if you don't have money, you can't make uh, healthy choices. You're you make the best that's choice the that's what's available, and a yeah. lot of times those choices aren't great because you're limited. You're limited in what you can do, and um, oh yeah, yeah. So you feel like you're running in a cycle. I, I it's hard for someone who's you know really poor to say you need to look inside your inner soul and, and bring it out and expose it. To there we light go. It. <laughs> when, when there you're we really, go, brother. It, it, when you're yeah. really trying to just struggle to, to survive and, 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 and live a correct way, a way that is, you know, peaceful. So yeah, it, it's hard. It becomes a, it becomes an abstract idea. You know, um, I remember, you know, going to a, a very uh, poor community in Johannesburg and, you know, I went with a group of, thinkers and you know people and um, and artists and you know the, as soon as one of the first speakers started speaking one of the guys stood up and said but that is you cannot think of what you guys are talking about until you have something in your stomach at least yeah. you know until you've eaten something so there is a way in which even our solutions they fail at the level of you know the, the practical the practicalness of you know being poor being poor and 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 therefore shutting down a lot of your senses so so you know there's a need for us to stand up also in practical ways and and just like go into those communities and and start like doing something you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that's partly what also I'm, I'm 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 trying to get involved in more and more you know to 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 have this kind of like dual response, you know, while we're seeking this utopian place, a spiritual paradigm of peace, you know, but also seeking other forms of harmony within ways of living and making sure that equality is 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 a thing that starts to to be real, you know. Now. Uh, I'm going to get into the, normally I don't do this with interviews. I just, <laughs> these, these kind of questions, <laughs> I, I just read into you and I felt that I just had some questions that are more uh, soul searching than just the music itself. And, and I sure. really appreciate it. We're going to start talking about your album, but this is what I think you should be doing. I know that you're stuck in the house, um, having just some zoom conversations with some good thinkers, share it with the world. Yeah. I think that that's, yep. that's, it, it would be it would be a great a part of connecting with people and healing. I think you. It's, I'm 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 knighting you as that person to go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm interviewing records and and people. <laughs> like I'm that's my contribution. <laughs> With, uh, I hear uh, you, man. <laughs> uh, now the the the, fir- the first uh, song on the album has your wife on it. Um, yeah, and it's your first single off the album, uh, and yep. you are going to make me pronounce it. So see how far I got. Uh, ya- Yasase and Ma Yama, Mama. So it's a Yeshisani Umoya. Okay. Now, what is what does that mean, and what what's going on with this song? So you know that particular song, 
is what um, the message I was referring to earlier on about like, you know, um, how music can have these prophecies inside of it. So, yes, Isanumoya basically means like the descending of the spirit, you know, and, and that as an intervention in a time where the body is weak at a time where, you know, we feel helpless. And so it, it's, it's an energy that brings about healing and, 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 and it pushes away all the sicknesses, you know, and, 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 it, and it, it heals the body uh, through sound. So that song really speaks about that, but it, it puts it in a poetic way, you know, about this idea of following a, guide, a guiding star, you know, which is, you know, was quite strong when we were thinking about the song. Like, we have to follow something that is, that looks so small from the eye, but that is so big in itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, your music is really beautiful. And, and uh, it, it's... It's. I could see it's soothing the soul, and I think that you're you're not selfish at all. You you definitely uh, give away beautiful solos to your your. Um, oh, thank you, brother. Player. But I, I there's a uh, you know definitely there's a notice about uh, especially with with uh, Alzheimer's people they could see how the the synapse light up with music like music uh, yeah. creates. Yeah. A pattern inside their brain of of and, and that is a soothing quality and and sounds do that like certain tones i don't know have you have you gotten that far sure. yet to say like these tones this note this these uh repetitions of, course, of, of sounds are, are are healing in some way yeah so that's awesome you know uh, in in 20 uh 2017 i put out another record called ecambi it can be, you know, is a record that was very deliberate about what you are asking. So it was an exploration. So it can be basically is a Zulu word for a herbal concoction. Okay. So it is believed that Sangomas, you know, in my culture, Sangomas are healers, go up to the mountain and they are guided to particular trees to extract particular medicines and, and combine them to heal sicknesses. So Ikambi was that album where I was trying to think what in sound could be the equivalent? What is like a, a, like a sonic concoction? What does it mean to, to start thinking about keys, timbre, you know, rhythms, uh, reputation, like you're saying, as ways of healing? What, what does it take to combine those in a way that heals? So I think by now, since I recorded that album in 2017 that thing is is almost like you know encoded in in my composition that like you know i think deliberately about like what keys would produce harmonious sounds and what instrumentations like yeah. you know the use of the alto saxophone as well as you know i use it in many ways as the voice of a mother you know and 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 logan richardson you know, there is no one better to have done this. You know, he's he's a good friend of mine, and 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 you know, I I had been a big fan of of his work from Jason Moran and 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 Nashid Waits and Torres Martini. They they did an album called Equality some years ago. Oh yeah, I have and that album. man, mm -hmm. oh man, it's it, it's beautiful. So you know, like you know, when I heard his sound, I was like, man, this is like, this sound cares. You know, this sound cares. This sound is warm. You know, so even with the personnel, I went and looked like Omakuku's voice, my wife as well. It's like, you know, it had to be that voice. It's like a cry, but at the same time, this cry makes it difficult for the sound to be painful you know because you cry because of pain but then i argue that the sound that comes out of the cry in itself you know refuses to be painful you know so these are some of the things that really inform the sound if you think about uh, the other side as well it's one of the songs where my wife is singing and um, you know it, it's a ballad and it draws a lot from that like ab lincoln kind of style and 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 again you know it's about you know, accepting this transition of death, you know, that like, you know, there's, there is peace, you know, somewhere else, you know, so there is no need to cling to the body when the body fails, you know, like you, you, we have to let go, you know. And so there are all of these messages and sounds and keys and timbres and, 
and people that are in this town that make that vision come through. That vision of healing is a deliberate thing from all of these standpoints for me. Now, there are segments. The second song on the album, it starts out just like a, like a, a, a march or a funeral uh, procession. Yep. Okay. Yep. I thought I was right. Now. Yeah, you, it's perfect. You, you're yeah. right. Spot on. Shine, Shine is a one beautiful melodic song. Um, oh man! <laughs> yeah. Now that that is exactly what I guess I'm getting at. Where, you know, I've been listening to your album like nonstop for like about a week, and I have oh, to bro, I have to stop it. You, man. This song just hits hits something, and yeah. and, I, and I think that's a good example of just exactly what you were talking about. Exactly, you know, and shining in 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 as much as. It's not a 12 bar blues, but I, I think the feeling is really bluesy at the same time, you know? It's, it uses that quite a lot in the melody. You know, it, the blues scale is quite pronounced in the melody. I think it creates a level of melancholy. It kind of- There sinks, we go. It yeah. sinks me into that sunken place of sadness, but- <laughs> but, it, yeah, but, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's the uh -huh. thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like how the blues was a yeah. place of pain, but also happy to be there because it's the only thing you had. And also it's very confrontational. You know, you're confronting your pain. You're confronting your sadness. There could be power in that. Sure. Now, uh, Beneath Earth, I, we may have talked about this. It's we, the, we have, this, yeah, a little bit. The, the distance between people. You, you were um, talking about this in, a te like, not a TED Talk, but a, maybe a PBS uh, one of your things about being really focusing in the metaphysical the distance yeah. between people. Yeah, you did say this. So can just just for this uh, interview, just say yeah. the song is about blah, and then we'll I'll edit it in right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So beneath the earth, it is really about the idea of invoking gods. You know. But, you know, so this notion that came with um, Christianity, that God existed in the sky, so it questions that, you know, it, it, because the reference of God in African cosmology references the, the soil, the ground, the sun, you know. So basically beneath the earth is a way of, you know, questioning where do we find our gods. And even in the song, I start singing, you know. I, I, I do our gods live in our dreams? You know, I start singing about where they are and how do we locate them. So it's really a piece that harnesses that narrative of like the plurality of what it means to believe that you can believe wherever your gods are. You know, they, they should be a plural, a pluralism rather about that as opposed to a fixed hegemonic idea of where, like how to believe how to worship and, and all of that. And I invited a singer who's not a jazz singer per se. I did this deliberately, you know, she's a singer songwriter, I'm Saki, to sing this song because I wanted to create, uh, you know, this kind of dissolving again of this singularity of even jazz music, you know, you know, as a genre that borrows as well elsewhere. Indo was also, uh, your second yeah. single, I think, off the album, uh, yeah. and it it was um, uh, talking to the spirits with the use of water or yeah, water. yeah there we go. You know, there was one thing about the water. Where you got that, man? You you got it. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. <laughs> the, the one thing about water that I, I think that people forget, or like when you, I, well, I'll be honest with you, this is how I got it. You were talking about it in in one of your. Um, your, your discussions before you played the song. But sure. what, what was in my head that is that if you immerse yourself in water, right, and you li yeah. really listen to what's inside your head, while it feels yeah. soothing and you're kind of swaying back and forth with the water, you're actually psychologically um, fighting it off because you don't want to drown. And yeah. your, 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 wow. bo your, your body is telling you, don't drown, don't drown. While yep. your mind is going like, ooh, this feels good, or this feels um, 
you know, really relaxing and, and I'm, I like yeah. the way yeah. the water swing and it's hitting me in the yeah. face or whatever. But yeah, yeah un undercurrent is like the, the physical is, is, is fighting that off. It's yeah. It's really, yeah. it, it's kind of interesting when you were, were talking about it. I was like, that piece wasn't mentioned, but you know, that's my interpretation. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's a beautiful interpretation uh, because in the, in the healing uh, works in, in, in South Africa, a lot of the people just heal using water and because water is believed to have memory as well. So, so like, oh, you definitely. know, uh, if, if you sing around water, it, it, it has a way of coding that into its own memory and, 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 you know, linked with uh, Beneath the Earth, you know, so Indau really becomes this song that uh, evokes this particular vortex, you know, because Beneath the Earth speaks at these various vortexes, you know, Earth, fire, and all of these things, the mountains and everything. So Indau focuses on the gods that live beneath the earth, underneath water. And to my surprise, you know, when we put out that single, man, it's got like hundreds and thousands of hits, you know, I, I wouldn't have imagined, you know, because that's like a really standard kind of jazz, almost like, you know, modal, you know, minor blues, so to speak, you know, uh -huh. and I, I wouldn't have thought that people would gravitate towards that in the way that they have, you know, man, everyone talks about it on the socials and, I, you know, I, it's unbelievable what this song has managed to, to do, you know. That's awesome. There's uh, there, yeah. you have a longer song. I think it's probably the longest song on the album. Is it Amlotha? Yes, yes, yes. And that that, that is that, that seems almost like it's in parts. Like it it changes like twice. Right there. Like it, yeah. Right there. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is a kind of a, some kind of a, you know a text or a chapter you know within the song. Exactly, man. So it, it has three movements. So, you know, basically the umlota is um, dust, you know, and uh, no, it's ashes, actually, not dust. I'm sorry. It's ashes. And um, so, that you know, a lot of what we're thinking about now in the context of the world now where we are, um, I think of this particular moment as, as the moment of invocation. You know, it's it's like we need to be seeking intervention from other paradigms, other realms. So Umlota, in the context of ritual, it, it is the memory of that. It, it is the post something, you know? So for instance, Umlota becomes the post banning, but then also we, we can think of it in the context of now and think, what would be the post corona moment where um, you know, uh, would we continue to sort of like live in a, in a hybrid kind of way where we still be hanging out on Zoom and, and also, you know, be meeting in person, you know, the, the willingness to see a new world, basically. Yeah. So those three movements are, are dealing with that, like from, from like what, what is essence, what is rooted to this kind of liminal space where things do not have a name, things do not have a meaning, things are just floating to a construction of a new world, to a construction of a new meaning. So yeah, it goes through through those three movements. And in the end, it's like a new world and you can feel, you know, the counterpoint where the solos are, you know, uh, everyone is collectively soloing, but there is a strong underpinning rhythmic figure that the piano is holding and the drums, you know. So, so it's like, are we going to hold on to that underpinning idea or are we going to let go in the way that the horns are letting go? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful way yeah. to think of where we currently are as humanity now, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful song. It's, it's, Thank I, you. Thank yeah, you. Thank I, I, I looked at it as a total epic. I was like, Oh, this is like an epic. And I was like, there's so, there's so much there. Um, Oh, uh, thank you, brother. Thank the, you. The the only thing I have left, believe it or not, <laughs> I still have another question, <laughs> is that you just released a remix with King Fila, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, and, and I was like, okay, this threw me for a loop. Are you doing um, 
remixes for people or is this a uh, <laughs> how i mean it's a traditional dance song with the with the uh edm intro and the and the the dance beats attached to it um <laughs> is this something you've done in the past or is this a one-off thing or what was your so, contribution yeah so oh man you know, I never, I never had anyone interviewing me ask that question. So thank you for allowing me to speak about this because, you know, people see it as somewhat irrelevant for a jazz musician. But oh um, no, not at all. So how, yeah. So how I see it is like, what lives in the post life of a jazz standard? You know, because King Fella is borrowed from that album I spoke about. It's a song I recorded in 2015 on listening to the ground. And it was a dedication to Fela Kuti, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, um, and you know, when I visited Nigeria, I went to the shrine and I was just like inspired by how people dance, man, for hours and hours and they never get tired. And so that song came out and I recorded it with uh, some of my friends, Norwegian friends and friends from Sweden. You know, we, we, we put together this album called Listening to the Ground. And so, you know, I've been friends with Black Coffee. So Black Coffee is a house DJ and he's really successful, like internationally, um, you know, uh, traveling all the world and stuff. So, you know, we did a song with him called Muye, which Muye is, is, is a song by a, another DJ called uh, Adam something. So Black Coffee asked me to play piano on that song. And that song talks about water as well, which is interesting. We speak about this. <laughs> so, so through that song, people were very excited all around the world about hearing a jazz piano player play in a house context, a dance context. So Black Coffee then uh, had this other song, King Fella, and his friend, Da Capo, he said to him, man, this is a beautiful song that could be remixed. And they asked me to do to play a new piano part, I did it. And then my wife sang on the song and that's how the song came out. And, and like now it's leading on all the, the charts, you know, in South Africa and even in the UK. So it's, it's a beautiful way to think about how jazz can have afterlives elsewhere in other okay. fields of sonic fields, you know? Well, yeah. you're, you're not just a jazz artist, you're a musician and a musician feels things all, all the way through. Yeah, like Definitely. so. Definitely. Inspiration comes in different ways, and and uh, you should never sit back and channel everything. I think it's a great song. I was like, hmm. Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, it's just that uh, you know, play around with this a little, then maybe go do something else a little. It's just a, you know, there's nothing wrong with yeah, like you know, opening up your your uh, mind to different sounds. For sure, it's a prayer as well. And I, I mean, people, the, the reason why people gravitate towards it now is, is because it's a prayer, you know? And it has links with the, Afric the South African National Anthem, some of the messages. They have connections with the National Anthem, which is a song that has been with us in difficult times in this country. So, so I think the resonances to that are striking a strong kind of feeling for South Africans in particular and how that national anthem has co always carried us through difficult times. So if you look on Twitter, so many people are saying, this is our new national anthem. This is our wow. new national anthem. <laughs> how cool is Which that? is the same thing that people said about Manenberg in the 70s when Abdullah Ibrahim put it out. People were saying, this is our national anthem. You know, so it's an honor for people to see it in that light, you know. Great. I think that's the yeah. song we'll, we'll use to fade out on this interview. Um, thank you, brother. Boy, boy was this so a lot much. of fun. Uh, I thank you very much for joining Something Came From Baltimore. I'll get you a copy of this um, and uh, hope to see you out on the on Zoom, having your own uh, philosophical uh, meetings with with. Uh, great minds in the future <laughs> thank you brother i will do my best to to involve to be involved as much as i can i appreciate i appreciate this interview and uh, i appreciate also your 
your contributions because I think I, I've learned so much as well just you know because it's a conversation I, I want to believe so thank you for making it feel so friendly and and homely thank you yeah thank you uh normally uh, you know we chop this down I talk about four songs and the thing is wrapped up in about you know 15 minutes and uh I'm gonna try to do oh a, I see a, I'll try to do a, a, a long version of this so people can, you know, listen to us, have fun talking to each other. Please, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, please allow that, that long version to, because I think this will be great for a lot of people. That long version is, is necessary. Oh, I agree. And yeah, we can it, it circulate was, it on the, on the social media as a conversation between me and you. you yeah, it, was, uh, it was important for me. It was good. It was a good, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to talk today. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Hi, it's Tom Gowker, and I am the host of Something Came From Baltimore. Something Came From Baltimore is a words and music podcast, and it has famous and future famous artists. Artists like Sean Jones, Rupert Holmes, Auntie Hammy, Joey DeFrancesco, Go Go Penguin, Joey Alexander, Bucanti, Gerald Albright, Paula Cole, and Kat Edmondson. It's music that matters. It's music for your ears. Listen and subscribe to Something Came From Baltimore and be a part of that Be More music scene.